Hi, this is Mike and another quick tip for video. This is how to use a shotgun microphone on a boom pole. Now, instead of using live actors for this particular quick tip, I've decided to use an illustration program which I just love called Daz 3D. It uses 3D characters for both illustration and animation. It's just great. So, uh, we're going to use those to demonstrate how to use a microphone on a boom to pick up quality sound. Now, because I'm using illustrations, it allowed me to do away with the camera, the lights, and other distractions within the picture that might make the uh, picture look a little bit cluttered. So for clarity, most of the time, all you see is the subject with the boom pole and the subject who's standing in front of the camera. Occasionally, I do show the camera as well. Holding the boom mic is quite simple. You hold your arms up in the air, try and get the boom as high as you can to get it out of the range of the camera. The advantage of these microphone systems is that they can be moved around during the shot, so if your subject is on the move, you'll always be able to follow the subject with the microphone. Now two things that you have to remember about using a shotgun mic on a boom. First of all, you have to get it close enough to the subject to give quality sound. And second, you're not allowed to see it in the picture. A shotgun microphone is used because its pickup pattern is very narrow. Therefore, it will pick up the sound from a greater distance than, say, your average hand mic, and it will keep much of the surrounding background sound to a minimum. Typically, on a wide shot, you'll want to pick up the person's voice by holding the microphone above the person and just a few feet toward the front. Before you shoot, adjust the microphone so that it angles toward the person's mouth when held in this orientation. Next, you must agree with the camera operator where the top of the frame is and make sure that you're a few inches above that. If possible, spot the shadow that your boom throws, hopefully somewhere offset, and watch that shadow during the take to be sure that your microphone doesn't dip into the shot. You don't always have to hold the mic above the person. On closer shots, you can hold it under the bottom of the camera's frame and point it up. This is easier on the person holding the boom. Besides watching to make sure that your mic is not visible in the shot, the camera operator should also watch out for shadows caused by the boom pole, the mic cable, or the microphone itself crossing the shot. Now obviously the picture that I have here of the subject with the boom shadow on her is a little bit exaggerated. Quite often it's a lot less evident and you really do sometimes have to look for it to make sure that these shadows don't appear. If the shot is just so wide that you can't get your boom close enough to the actors to be able to hear them, and you can't have them wearing a lapel mic or having a hidden microphone in the set somewhere, then you're just going to have to replace the dialogue in post-production.